Hey everyone, welcome to week 26. This is day five, Friday. It's last day of our one room week. Uh, yesterday, we had an awesome uh, guest appearance during the intro. Uh, that was me with uh, Danny's uh, sweater. So that was very nice. Uh, <laughs> so throughout the week, we've done, uh, what have we done? We did Danny's shower cap. Then we did our toothbrushes and uh, toothpaste. Then we did Danny with her shower cap because it was so cool, why not paint it again? Then uh, I painted my green shampoo. That's my green shampoo, so it had to be painted. And today we're gonna see if our, uh, <laughs> if the guest appearance from yesterday's intro uh, makes an appearance once again in the painting. So yeah, I'm gonna paint Danny again, so that's it. Remember, next week, new theme, so we'll see you guys next week. <coughs> Okay, let's get started. Now, this is our last painting, our last painting for the week of our theme of one room. Remember, we've been kind of depositing our energy and directing our gaze onto one room of our choosing, and we chose the bathroom. And it doesn't mean that we had to explore the bathroom literally as a space. It doesn't mean that these were going to be interior paintings. I don't think I've done an interior, you know, quote unquote interior painting throughout the week. I've understood the space as almost this uh, cubicle, this receptacle of atmosphere. And as soon as I stepped in and I was sensitive to the nature of the light, to the temperature of the light, and to the physical qualities of that light, and how it affected everything that was enveloping, I realized I have to paint light. This exercise, yes, it was about a room. Yes, it was about a specific room. Yes, it was about the way in which we inhabited that room and how we are affected, how our actions are affected by that room. But as soon as I saw the light, I was like, oh, forget it. I always paint light. This is just another pretext to paint light. So maybe that's all life is, just, you know, a very complex pretext to uh, paint light. But uh, anyways, so I've kind of measured in a way the limitations that this space has in the sense that I wanted to see how far I could extend the sense of atmosphere that I was sensitive to when I first almost like stepped into, stepped into, you know, quote unquote, because I've, you know, I, I use the bathroom like a hundred times a day. Actually, that sounds weird, but you know, I step into this place constantly, that sounds weird too, but I know this place, I'm familiar with this place. So it's not like I'm just gonna step into it for the first time. But when I looked at it with painting eyes, you know, with just highly, highly sensitive eyes, I realized, yeah, I just need to paint atmosphere. So that's why Monday's painting was about, yes, 100% atmosphere. Tuesday's painting was about Danny and me and just about the things that represent us, us as a couple in there. So there's a duality to that painting. There's almost like an axis. And then there's just a reflection in that painting. So I thought that was very beautiful. Then Wednesday's painting, I tried to denote Danny's presence within that space and how Danny's presence could be an affirmation of her. So yes, there is atmosphere, but then there's also this idea of her, this, this imposing idea of her that has to be expressive. And yesterday's painting, I thought, okay, let's see if we can also find within that atmosphere, within that space full of air, of very thick air, Let's see if we can find different hues, uh, different bits of saturation, a little bit of contrast. Let's see if we can expand the value range a little bit. So that's why I kind of found a spot where I was like, okay, there's a bunch of colors in there. There's a bunch of different hues in there. There's a little bit of saturation in there with that red and the green, a little bit of the blue in that soap bottle that's on the back. And I was like, yes, this is it. And I also had the chance to speak about light, how light traverses those objects. It doesn't just swallow them. It doesn't just envelop them. It also travels through them and it affects the objects that are around them by traveling through them. So that green reflection of the um, shampoo bottle on the wall, on the tiling of the uh, shower. Oh my God, that was like, yes, I want to paint that. And it's very, very simple, but it it obviously uh, was the thing that moved me to say, I want to take my gaze and just put it on this little spot, on this little place within this uh, idea of bathroom. So for today, I thought, okay, 
we've compiled all these things, you know, atmosphere, expression, and then trying to find within, you know, those uh, parameters, color and saturation and uh, an expanded value range. Let's see if we can go back to the bigger idea that was what attracted me most in the first day. And let's see if those things, if I can carry those things, all those things that I've learned from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and let's put them on in Friday's painting. And I wanted to see if it was just gonna be this jumbled, very confusing painting where I was trying to balance everything or if one thing would prevail over the others. So I noticed immediately by deciding to paint Danny again, by deciding to acknowledge her presence again, that I was going to speak about her and I was going to speak about atmosphere. I was like, yeah, those two things are the most important aspects of this painting. And the other stuff, like expanding my value range, uh, finding saturation, finding different hues, I was like, I can actually give those up. When I think about those things, that's when my Gwen John just shows up and says, no, no, I'm actually completely fine with a, you know, sort of desaturated palette. I'm totally fine with grays. I just love a reduced value scale. So I have to go back to my basics, kind of go back to the motherland. I, I love my grays. I love my shorter range of values. I love to be expressive rather than sort of naturalist. That is entirely who I am. So even though a lot of these weeks, you know, during these exercises, I've tried a bunch of stuff. I mean, I put myself in situations where I go like, oh my God, I've never tried these hues before. I've never tried to work within, you know, this degree of saturation, but I'm going to give it a shot. I've never tried to use this condition of light before, but I'm going to, you know, give it a try. I'm going to give it a whack. And I think that all those things keep painting exciting for me, but in the end, I have to be true to the painter that I know I am, which is basically, you know, a gray painter. That's who I am. That's what I do. That's what I've always loved to paint. So it's not like I feel that I'm betraying those things when I'm doing the exercises. I feel I'm expanding my vocabulary. But in the end, we are but one painter. We are but one human being. And yes, one human being that is able to celebrate and applaud and enjoy tons of things in life. But I think that my values, um, and I'm not talking about how light and dark something is, but just the values that I've used to construct the person that I am, those values are just one, you know. And that idea of oneness, of a singular quality, I think that's the one that's been creeping into my painting throughout these past weeks. Because it could be a very kind of simple technical exercise just by saying, let's use one brush or let's focus our gaze on one room. Or if we say, let's talk about bigness and oneness. Many times I've referred to the wholeness of the picture as oneness. So I am kind of turning to nature to try and see this single idea, this bigger essence of things, the bigger makeup of things. And you know, when we talk about these things, it seems like there would be a pot at the end of the rainbow, like there's an answer to all of this after you do a painting. And the truth is, there's none. I mean, there are crumbs along the way. I feel that that's what happens when we paint and we paint honestly. We find like these little crumbs and we say, yeah, this is the right path. Little lights along the way that light up when we take the right path. And I want to make this clear. The right path is the right path for me. I've never been dogmatic about painting. I mean, I do have a stance in terms of what I believe painting to be nowadays. But that doesn't mean that I don't appreciate or I don't respect all the efforts that everyone else puts into their own path, into carving their own journey. And I applaud them and celebrate them. And I'm always, always happy to just be moved by painting wherever it comes from. It could be places that I have never imagined, but if it moves me, I'm like, yes, I am totally yours. So this is just me. This is just my path that has been constructed upon all the decisions that I've made in life and all the experiences that I've had in my life. Uh, what's very cool is that sometimes I approach these ideas of searching for singularity, searching for this single, almost like one-way path. I imagine that it's going to be like a, you know, like a stream that goes one way and you just hop in there and it carries you in this one direction. But the reality is that it's not. 
when I was doing paintings during this week, I realized there are so many options, even when we try to reduce everything to just this idea of oneness. Even if our mind's eye, if our gaze is directed to a tiny, tiny little place, you realize that it's just surrounded by so, so many options, so many things we could prioritize, so many ways to understand the hierarchies in our painting. It's just so, so much, you know, it, it's almost like you focus in on something and you realize it opens up the door, a tiny little door, you know, a Willy Wonka door. It opens up to a separate universe. There are lifetime of choices every time we decide to focus in on something. And that is just absolutely fascinating to me because by thinking that we are taking the right path and we're walking down this road that seems to only be directing us towards one place, I don't know what that one place is, I sometimes feel that that's going to be like a funnel that you're leaving a lot of stuff behind, you're sacrificing stuff like we've spoken about in past weeks, but it's kind of leading you to this one place. And the reality is it's not really a funnel. It's just a road that at the time may seem like it is restrictive, like there's just one lane and it's kind of tight, but really as, as soon as you're there, you realize I could do anything. Within these parameters, I could do anything. Within this kind of one direction, I could just move around and do whatever I please. I was conscious of how many ways I could just really resolve this exercise during this week and how all I did was just try to be faithful and answer with honesty to the first thing that moved me and that I was struck by, which was atmosphere. And for today, I was just trying to take all those things that I had gathered and just make something out of it. But I realized that I, I decided to leave stuff behind. I was like, yeah, I noticed the power that you have saturation during the week and that you have broader uh, value range during the week, but I'm going to leave you guys behind because I don't really need you. I'm not going to yearn for you. I'm not going to miss you. I was like, yes, let's go back to atmosphere. And instead of approaching the painting like we did on Wednesday with uh, Danny with her shower cap on, I thought I could model the painting a little bit. And by the way, this is a return of me using a different white. I've been using for a long time, I think, oof, maybe for the past three years, maybe. Oof, that's a lot. Yeah, maybe for the past two and a half, three years, I've been using Michael Harding's titanium white with dryers. Every time I see it, I would buy it, but it started to be a little bit harder to find, and I stopped. So my titanium white with dryers, goodbye. I loved you, you gummy, kind of sappy, <laughs> very weird white to use, but I've kind of liked it. And I love the fact that, you know, in one or two days, it's just completely touched dry. And I started using again, a little bit of the, um, of a flake white. I think it's a Williamsburg uh, flake white that I had. And it did affect my painting a little bit. Flake white is something that's totally different. It's a different beast when compared to uh, titanium white. And the way I can explain how they are different, it's a very simple one. I think that titanium white is so overpowering. It has uh, such tinting strength that even though it can make mixes turn a little bit chalky, you could put it in a mix that has just about any pigment. It doesn't matter what their saturation is and what their tinting strength is. Titanium white is going to be able to lighten that mix. It is. It just simply is. It is that strong. Flake white, flake white doesn't behave the same way. Lead white, you actually have to feed color very slowly into lead white. It's actually a lot better than just having, let's say, a mix of, I don't know, bismuth yellow and cadmium red, and you want to lighten that up, and you just start feeding lead white into that mix. In my experience, that is going to take a long time to lighten up, and it's going to take a lot of lead white. So you're actually going to waste a ton, a ton of your paint. Instead, what you should do is just have an area of your palette that is primarily lead white, where you just slowly, very, very slowly, just bring those colors into it. So the way I think my painting was sort of affected by using lead white is that I was being mid-tone heavy. And that is totally fine. Like, that is where I love to be in my painting. Like, I really enjoy contrast, but if you ask me, I am so comfortable with a compressed value range that I, I was like, yes, I can totally work within this uh, scale 
And given the subject matter and given the fact that I wanted to emphasize atmosphere, I was totally fine by doing a painting that is mid-tone heavy. And I probably got a little too used to using my Michael Harding titanium with dryers. And that's always not kind of cool. I, I don't like to be dependent on any color, however good it is. And Michael Harding does incredible oil paint. But however good it is, I don't like to depend on any one particular brand or any one particular pigment because if that is gone, if for some reason I can't buy it or if they don't make it anymore, then I'm always going to be like, oh my, oh my God, I can't paint. And I don't want to have that idea in my mind. I always want to believe that regardless of what I use, I can paint, I can make the best of it. So yeah, so this is going to be goodbye to that wonderful kind of sappy <laughs> titanium white. And I'm probably not going to use lead white. I'm just using whatever I had left over. I am probably going to start using just regular titanium white ground in maybe linseed oil. We'll see how that goes. I kind of like the grabbier uh, feeling that the white with dryers had. And maybe titanium white is going to feel a little too creamy for me when compared to that coarser white that was the titanium with dryers but it doesn't matter i'll adjust and maybe the paintings look a little bit different but who cares that it, it is what it is so when i was thinking about making that sacrifice and saying what am i going to hold on to i know a painter that is uh, an incredibly incredibly nice guy i think he's one of the most talented draftsmen i've ever ever seen i mean this guy oof it's like crazy. I, if people are around his area, Washington, Seattle area, they should totally look him up and they should totally see if they can uh, have him as an instructor or just attend his open drawing uh, or painting figure sessions because oof, I think he is that good. And I'm speaking about Aaron Coberly. I honestly feel weird kinship with everything he does. I was shocked when I met him and, you know, shout out to uh, David Longo for um, introducing us. When I met Aaron, I, I never realized that he was uh, self-taught. So that is even far more impressive than I think because I thought he had a very, very strong formal training. But no, this is all him. This is just him trying to figure things out. And that just makes me uh, respect him so much more. So... Absolutely amazing guy, incredible painter, and I feel that a lot of the things that I'm talking about today, just about atmosphere and expressiveness and this coarseness, by the way, I think he achieves some of that texture in his painting, some of that coarseness in his painting. I think he mixes sometimes, or, or he's been experimenting with like marble dust, but maybe he can correct me if I'm wrong about that. But I think his painting is what you get when you're very confident at drawing, when you're very, very confident at mark making, and when you are willing to sacrifice some of the accuracy in order to have some of that expressive mark making just show up. I was totally reminded of him. Again, I feel that my painting and his painting would be living in the same household. Uh, we could be brothers, we could bicker and fight all the time, but there is something that binds us. And it's this invisible thing that I think is there. You know, I met Aaron and I thought he was just a, an incredibly wonderful guy. And every time I see him paint, I'm like, hell yeah. This is another painter that is uh, from my village. So <laughs> that was very cool that I immediately thought of him when I was trying to round up all the things that were important about this week. So I guess that's it for today and that's it for this week's theme. Uh, remember, next week is going to be a different theme and spoilers, it's going to be something completely different, totally different. And I'm hoping that people can actually participate because it's going to be something that requires you to participate. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to do anything in this life. But I think it would be awesome if you could. That's about it. I think on Sunday, I'm going to describe what I would want to do during the week. And hopefully I can count with uh, a bunch of you guys to make this exercise like super, super fun. But it is going to be different. I'm warning you guys, give it a chance. It's only a week. Just give it a shot. You know, you have nothing to lose. It's always going to just be me talking nonsense. So it's just another week of that. So uh, as always, Danny and I thank you for letting us be your company. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye.